ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு எட் அனதர் செஷன் ஆன் எஸ் ஏ பர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ்ஸ் டாபிக் ஃபார் டுடே இஸ் ஃபிலாசஃபி ஆஃப் வாண்ட்லெஸ்னஸ் இஸ் யூட்டோப்பியன் வைல் ஃபிலாசஃபி ஆஃப் மெட்டீரியலிசம் இஸ் கிமெரா ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் ஐ ஹவ் அ பர்சனல் ரிக்வஸ்ட் தேர்ட் எடிஷன் ஆஃப் மை புக் எத்திக்ஸ் இன்டிகிரிட்டி அண்ட் ஆப்டிடியூட் ஃபார் சிவில் சர்வீசஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் இஸ் ரிலீஸ்ட் so please buy original there are uh, enough pirated copies outside and the pirated copies are of very low print quality so original books can be bought from the seller arvind india on flipkart and the seller affordable on amazon as always friends before we uh, start writing the essay we have to conceptualize the essay as being made of various components and sub components so this essay initially we would actually uh give introduction followed by we would discuss the essence of the topic then why wantlessness is utopian why materialism is chimera then are they really unachievable are they abs- absolute absolute and then we would conclude so we will let's start friends i feel the best way to start this uh, essay is by taking reference to buddha and his followers and then to alexander as well see why buddha because all of us are aware friends buddha was a prince siddhartha he was being brought up in a very luxurious lavish uh, uh, environment however a sight of uh, an ill man an elderly man and uh, a dead body and then uh, a saint actually transformed his life and he was fo- he was motivated to leave world worldly pleasures Uh, that is what we call great renunciation then he had enlightenment afterwards then he built uh, buddhism i mean buddhist uh, uh, line of uh, monasteries or whatever but however after buddha his followers were not able to continue were not able to follow the life prescribed by buddha uh, the buddhist monasteries became uh, uh, a place of uh, corruption and uh, buddhist monks also indulged in lot of unethical and unscrupulous practices that actually led to the degeneration and decline of buddhism which we have studied in history but how does this re- get related to wantlessness and materialism is my question see logic is simple friends see buddha's life so, as prince siddhartha symbolizes materialism correct so he realized the futility of materialistic pleasures he was at the pinnacle of materialism then he realized the futility of the same then he renounced and he started he he embraced the philosophy of wantlessness he wanted to lead a very simple life life of a Uh, of a saint of an ascetic of an uh, with lot of austerities etc correct so that uh, wantlessness uh, was the bedrock of buddha's philosophy all of us know buddha's enlightenment itself says that life is full of sorrows desire is the root cause of sorrow correct so this but but here here comes the very important uh, point actually so thus buddha firmly believed in wantlessness he built his sect he built his religion on the principle of wantlessness however however his followers were not able to continue with the same rigor the philosophy of wantlessness that is the sole reason for the degeneration of or decline of buddhism correct so that means if wantlessness were to be something which can be practiced by everyone perhaps the world would have been very different today buddhism would have changed the world altogether correct but that wantlessness is something which is not very easy to be achieved by each and every individual that's why his followers were not able to were not able to Uh, i mean stick to the principle of wantlessness so that led to the decline of buddhism so this inability of buddha's followers to stick to the principle of wantlessness clears aptly uh, aptly clarifies to all of us that wantlessness is not easy to achieve it is utopian correct then similarly renunciation of buddha represents the fact that materialism is a chimera there is no end to it correct so this is how you can start the essay this is the first way to start this is the second is another example is of alexander perhaps alexander was one person 
who wanted to conquer the entire world the world's greatest conqueror is alexander all of us know but when alexander conquered everything and there is a famous saying right when alexander conquered everything at the uh, towards the end of his life he he claimed he is alleged to have made a statement that uh, uh, while uh, burying my body please leave my hand outside so that the uh, world would get to know that the person who conquered the entire world went to the heavenly abode uh, in empty hand correct so that also uh, testifies beyond doubt uh, the beyond doubt the uh, fact that materialism is chimera correct what is my, b- b- because i could not think of any better example than alexander as a pinnacle of materialism correct so then let's move on friends friends since it's a philosophical essay a lion's share of your essay should be devoted to explaining the essence of the essay topic itself see i feel the best way to analyze or i mean explain or elaborate the essence of this topic is that see first actually friends see what is the topic it is philosophy of wantlessness philosophy of materialism right so what is the basic uh, tenet of any philosophy for that matter any school of thought of philosophy every philosophy every philosopher seeks to explore the nature of objective of human life or or the means to achieve the human life i mean uh, means to achieve the objective of human life correct right see because we know that aristotle in particular and greek philosophers in general um, argued that the whether the objective of human life is eudaimonia which is nothing but happiness to stay happy to realize happiness see let us relate the same to indian philosophers indian philosophers almost every indian philosopher believed that the objective of human life is to live a life in such a way that uh, he the soul would attain salvation or liberation or deliverance what do you mean by this salvation liberation or deliverance it is escape from the cycle of birth and death correct so a person uh, who attains salvation or moksha as we call uh, in sanskrit uh, the person would not that soul would not be reborn as human correct so why would philosophers focus so much on escaping from rebirth it is purely because being born as human itself means that a person has to endure lot of pains so escaping from the cycle of birth and death would mean a person would escape from pain and a person or soul would rather than calling it a person we should call it soul the soul would stay happy so thus directly or indirectly even indian philosophers were advocating the fact that a person has to stay happy how you would uh, how uh, i mean how would you stay happy so somebody said karma somebody said bhakti somebody said uh, materialism like charvaka so there are different schools of thoughts that advocated various means to live uh, life in such a way that uh, ultimate objective of happiness is achieved correct so thus but of all the uh, schools of thoughts which advocated lot of uh, ways or means to achieve that ultimate objective of happiness in life i think two major or diametrically opposite to 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 diametrically opposite uh, views or the uh, views is about uh, most of the philosophers said that a person has to stay wantless a person has to stay wantless see what do you mean by wantlessness what do you mean by wantlessness see wantlessness means having no wants friends it is important here to strike a difference between need and want okay need is a physiological necessity want is a psychological necessity i repeat need is a physiological necessity want is a psychological necessity what do you mean by need eating food to stay alive okay eating food to stay alive is physiolo- is is need because without which you will not survive correct but eating exotic food 
is a want that's a psychological necessity so if you if you ask me if there is any test that would differentiate a particular necessity uh, distinguish a particular necessity between want and need then the test is just apply the same thing to other creatures other human uh, other animals birds uh, insects whatever other creatures see whatever what are all the things that are common between other creatures and uh, human beings in terms of necessities they constitute need everything oh, other than that is want see every animal wants to have basic food basic food is need basic shelter basic shelter need sex sex need but living in a palatial living in a uh, mansion is not aspired by any other creature except human being so that's a want correct so thus basically what is wantlessness wantlessness especially means living leading a life without aspiring much without seeking unnecessary necessities this is what we call wantlessness if a person stays wantless that means a person would definitely lead a noble life is the basic underlying thing because a person leading uh, 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 the want is the root cause for all the miseries want is the root cause for all the unethical acts want is the root cause for all the misdeeds which a human takes up correct why would anybody indulge in a financial scam to make money correct if it has to be put in terms of indian philosophy this want is the root cause for the sixth sense what we call arishad vargas correct so thus a person to lead a noble life and to escape from the cycle of birth and death or and to stay happy in this life and also after life a person has to stay wantless correct so this is how we have to explain the meaning of wantlessness then comes materialism see friends it's very interesting because while most of uh, 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 most schools of thought th- a um, bad for wantlessness bad for simple life there is one school of thought in india that bats for materialism that is what we call charvaka school of philosophy right so what would charvaka says charvaka says don't worry about after life enjoy life as much as possible that is also called lokayata so that means it is okay to take money and credit and to have and to eat ghee so that's a very famous saying uh, in that charvaka philosophy so basically they they firmly believe that without worrying about after life a person has to acquire as many material resources as possible in order to um, live a lead a life of happiness correct so this is another school of thought correct so here you have to explain what is materialism so materialism basically implies so acquiring as many material resources as possible to to satisfy as many wants as possible so basically it argues that to stay to lead a happy life one has to acquire materials one has to rely upon material pleasures etc etc so here you have to now explain the meaning of materialism friends once you have explained the uh, meaning of wantlessness and materialism see friends it is important since we have started the essay by taking recourse to the objective of life correct you can very well conclude this discussion stating that a person can be happy either by staying wantless because when you stay wantless you don't want anything else so you are happy you are contented with what you get or you should have the ability or you should acquire as many resources as possible to satisfy all your wants see in the first case you don't have wants so you are contented in the second case you have adequate resources to satisfy all your wants it is you are again satisfied correct so the problem always comes when the wants are unlimited resources are limited but 
correct but if wants are limited and resources are un unlimited there is no problem right so and this is the basic principle of uh, or this is the basic question with which the entire discipline uh, or academics of uh, economics is based then friends once we have explained wantlessness then once we have explained materialism it is important for us to explain why i mean because the topic is not uh, just wantlessness the topic is wantlessness is utopian so you should now elaborate you should now describe why wantlessness is a, a utopian friends here before you start what is utopian it is important for you to explain what is utopian also so because uh, what is utopian utopian means something which is very uh, which is very perfect which is most ideal yet very hard and difficult to achieve that is what we call utopian right that means wantlessness is a concept which is the most idealistic thing yet very hard to achieve so why wantlessness is very difficult the first and foremost thing is why it is utopian because it is very difficult to achieve correct so then what are the reasons for that the first and foremost thing is wantless wants are a basic instinct they are inherent in anybody's personality see people do need not have to make any conscious efforts to 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 acquire or to take up any wants right they are a part of our personality as inherently human beings want to lead a better life be thanks to the thinking capacity that is endowed upon human beings unlike other creatures so human beings seek to uh, seek uh, more and more psychological comforts those psychological comforts are nothing but wants so this thinking capacity it's a basic instinct so thus 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 controlling one's basic instinct itself is extremely difficult extremely difficult so this is the first reason for why wantlessness is utopian correct second thing is physical discomforts friends staying wantless implies that a person has to necessarily undergo a few physical discomforts see let us say a person decides to lead a life of wantlessness that means a person has to lead as simple life as possible so take the example of great saints sadhus etc so they go they stay in caves they stay in forests where they would not have even bed to sleep they would just lie on the floor correct so they would also uh, take the example of jain saints or jain uh, ascetics see they uh, they they, uh, they they take up something called uh, uh, salekhana ratha was by salekhana vratham it means that a person has to uh, slowly stop uh, so slowly stop eating correct so so all these things actually necessitates a person has to endure lot of physical discomforts it's not easy i'll give you another simplest example a person doesn't want to take up take, take ride by any automobile because he wants to stay wantless correct then that means he has to endure the pain of walking long distances he has to endure the tire pain of loss of time correct heat rain etc etc so correct so that means staying wantless essentially implies uh, enduring lot of discomforts physical discomfort so which is not very easy which is not very easy so it is very difficult then the second thing and the third the factor is external factors friends what are these external factors especially capitalism and marketing friends suppose in society everybody wants to stay wantless okay then wantlessness can become an utopian okay, okay need not become an utopian thing that, that can become a normal thing because everybody wants to live simple life so there is nothing much there are no external factors to disturb a person who wants to stay wantless correct 
is inter so long as he is mentally determined then things will be okay but what happens in this real world when most of the people want to stay materialistic that means they believe in acquiring as much material resources as possible okay they can acquire this material resources only when they make money how would they acquire that wealth or money it is through business right so that is the root cause for capitalism and marketing so here there are this capitalism and marketing have have this tendency to tempt to cajole everybody around to have artificial wants correct point number 1 so that is the whole purpose of all these advertisements that is they try all the tricks in the book of trade to convince a person to have want and to buy that product to satisfy that want so thus only a person who has the inner ability to overcome the power of those external marketing efforts will be able to stay wantless which is very difficult friends this is the whole reason why a person who wants to stay wantless mostly recluses himself to solitary confinement like himalayas or to some forest or to some ashram etc etc because that environment is extremely important correct so that is one external factor another external factor is see our own peers correct so peers are relatives or friends so they start uh, being materialistic so they they uh, they purchase bungalows they purchase flamboyant cars etc etc so that will automatically draw i mean make a person compare himself with others and for most of the individuals they fall into this trap and they also start chasing this materialism so finally that would make wantlessness even more difficult to be realized so because of all these factors wantlessness is wantlessness is utopian again friends you can again in a passing reference you can give the reso example of buddha and his followers only buddha could stay wantless not his most of his followers got it friends once we have explained why wantlessness is utopian it is important for us and pertinent for us to explain why materialism is chimera correct friends what is materialism as we already explained materialism is a school of thought where according to which a person has to acquire as much material resources as possible to satisfy all his wants right so that means true materialism gets realized when a person has achieved enough material resources and a person feels that no more material resources is necessary for him correct so that is materialism but that state of mind is chimera what is chimera chimera means an illusion it is an illusion that means the state of mind in which a person says that i have got other the enough material resources to stay happy life i don't want anything more is may true materialism but that is illusion so it is not possible for anyone to reach that state of mind why first one is higher and higher aims see because that sense of contentment comes only when a person has fulfilled his material ambition or fulfilled his material aim and he need not have to he need not have any more any higher material aim for fulfillment correct but what happens in reality you reach one material goal there is a higher material goal to be realized there is no end correct so let us take the, our own examples from our own life see in school all of us wanted just one cycle bicycle later we wanted a moped later we wanted a bike later we wanted a bullet later we wanted a car so later we wanted an suv so this is what happens for everyone there is absolutely no end so that's why once you have realized one material goal higher material goal will tantalize you will call you so that is the reason so since since there are higher and higher material aims 
then it is very difficult so you you reach one level and you just to realize that more levels to be reached correct so then risk see friends when achieving or realizing or acquiring enough material resources is not a simple thing right it involves for that you have to put lot of efforts correct that path to realize enough material resources is fraught with lot of risks investment risk and business risk is what i'm talking about so you know that if you want to make money first you have to invest money and that investing money does not always guarantee you windfall gains so many times you have to incur losses so thus this game of profits and losses this game of uh, acquisition of material resources and losing of material resources would not ensure that you always uh, have uh, adequate material resources so that is the second issue third one is non availability of enough resources friends i am reminded of gandhi ji saying wherein gandhi ji says there is enough to satisfy everybody's need but not everyone's greed correct so that means if everybody wants to have palatial bungalows if everybody wants to have flamboyant cars if everybody wants to have a sports car etc etc then the the whole world uh, becomes too much materialistic which becomes unwieldy environmental degradation happens uh, or at the same i mean the, the the lifespan of mankind as a whole itself gets short circuited and everybody would uh, just vanish correct so there's there is uh, the i mean enough material resources are not at all available next this materialism breeds six sins what are these six sins we know arisha dwarga right kama krodha lobha moha mada matsara this materialism would breed these six sins and these six sins would in turn act as obstacles in the path of realization of materialism how because a person be who is uh, who started acquiring material resources gets to become um, unscrupulously proud correct uh, then he gets to become more angry or he gets to become more furious he is filled with lot of uh, uh, heartiness if i may say so but then this uh, false pride this uh, anger would actually make a person to pick up unnecessary fights with others so uh, to the a person would create enemies for himself those enemies would start troubling this person and thus those enemies would only make the path of materialism more and more difficult correct so um and this is what actually and also um, the reasons why materialism remains to be chimera correct it is not possible friends i keep telling you so in every essay we need to introduce an element of analysis what is essential analysis so you should argue for the topic and then pause for a moment and then counter argue that itself is what i mean by analysis so all through we have argued that you wantlessness and uh, materialism are hard to achieve it is impossible basically correct but however are they really unachievable are they really utopian and chimera the thing is need not always be because we have seen on both the sides see for wantlessness we have individuals like mahatma gandhi ji buddha lot of saints who are undergoing who are undertaking penance in himalayas so lot of individuals have renounced all worldly pleasures to embrace the path of spirituality correct uh so that is for wantlessness at the same time for materialism we have we have bill gates we have warren buffett who are the richest persons on the earth so much so that they have un, i mean they, they have gone to the state of that like enough material resources and they have started doling out their wealth to the world at least for me in the entire world there are handful of people who have understood the essence or the understood the uh, importance of wantlessness and have led the life of wantlessness on the other end i also have a handful of people uh, who have braced who have uh, 
fought through all the risks associated with uh, materialism and finally have reached the pinnacle of materialism and they have realized that enough is enough i don't want anything more and they have started doling out to the world that means there is the wantlessness and and materialism for these people is not utopian and chimera right at least for those people then what are those qualities that made these people uh, uh, i mean stay apart from the rest of the crowd the first one is their grit and determination you need to have lot of grit you need to have lot of determination without determination because the path to lead a simple life is not simple it's not simple you are surrounded with lot of temptations and one has to overcome those temptation and that overcoming temptation is possible only with lot of mental grit and determination second thing is patience a person has to be law has to have patience there may be a uh, losses there may be failures there may be ridicules there may be criticisms there may be mockings etc 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 only this patience and belief or conviction in one's own uh, philosophy of either wantlessness or materialism would only keep a person moving third one is sacrifices of course it is uh, self explanatory it goes without saying that a person has to who wants to stay wantlessness has to sacrifice correct but at the same time a person who has to be who has to become true materialist should also have to sacrifice yeah he would have sacrificed his friends he would have sacrificed the spending quality time with family he would have sacrificed pursuing his inner calling so many times so many times correct last one is perseverance the path to either wantlessness or materialism is filled with lot of obstacles and difficulties you have to overcome those difficulties you have you should not get disturbed perturbed yet you have to keep moving correct so i mean because these are all passing references see analysis whenever you do it should not be in such a way that uh, it overshadows the uh, original argument itself so you have to give passing reference to all these things in two three paras and you can end then friends from the above discussion from the above discussion we have argued that wantlessness and uh, uh, materialism are unachievable or impossible to achieve then we have also argued that however though it is uh, so there are some cases in which it is possible some people have made it possible then what is the conclusion then perhaps the conclusion is absolute wantlessness or absolute materialism is what utopian or chimera all about correct it is not possible absolute wantlessness or absolute uh, materialism so the solution is in the right mix what is this right mix a person should try to stay contented this state of contentment with whatever a person gets is what i call the right mix or a golden mean between absolute uh, uh, wantlessness and absolute materialism this state of contentment that means see you try to you have minimal wants you understand your strengths try to do something if you get you be happy if you don't get you don't worry about it so that state of contentment of being happy with whatever one has is the golden mean so that would help a person lead a very happy life so this is all about uh, uh, i mean uh, wantlessness and materialism friends so you can still think of lot of examples for this so you can take up the example of capitalism you can take up the example of socialism you can take up the examples from lot of teachings of lot of philosophers etc 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 so there is no end the the Uh, the the uh, the scope is very vast wide okay all the best friends meet you with uh, another uh, essay perspectives next week thank you